How's it going, fellow club members? This is Leo Damascus with the Steam Controller Fan Club. And today, we're going to take a look at the new Action Layer feature from the September 13th Steam Beta Update. So the first question that I want to answer with this video is what exactly are action layers? The beta update is a little bit confusing, especially if you've never used Photoshop because they, they compare the action layers to Photoshop layers for some reason. But the basic gist behind them is this. Um, action layers are more or less the same as action sets, except for one vital difference. They inherit button presses from something that's applied before them. So basically, instead of just remapping everything like an action set does, an action layer is going to just apply a couple of button changes on top of an existing action set or an existing configuration. And they're designed so that you can apply them on the fly. So. Yeah, that more or less describes exactly what the difference is be between action sets and action layers. Uh, the, the advantages of these action layers is that you can see when I move over to a different action set that action layers have to have a parent action set, ju just one that that they inherit from, and those aren't going to be going to any of the others. So that means that an extremely complicated configuration isn't going to have as many options showing up at once, and so that's going to make them a bit more readable. And on top of that, because they are applying button changes on top of an existing configuration, that means that if I were to, for example, change the B button over here to let's say 9 just for the just for the sake of demonstration. Uh, it's going to be applied all the way down to all of the the action layers that are associated with this action set. So it makes it easier to change your configurations on the fly when you just want to have uh, one or two small changes. So the next question is how exactly do you use an action layer. So I've already got got one right here, but just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to open up a new action layer just to show you. So when you get a new action layer, it's going to look the same as your default action set, but with all of the buttons uh, dimmed as far as the as far as the colors on the individual button names and button glyphs are concerned. So what, what you want to do when you want to make a change, let's say for, for the test, once you activate it, I want to change the A button to the P button for some reason. You can see that the A glyph and the A button there uh, lit up and it changed so that it says P. And that way you can know that that particular button has been changed in the set. And so now, if I were to go into the the default uh, the default action set, um, what I would want to do to be able to activate that is click on Apply Action Layer, and then I'll want to select the action layer that I created, Test. Uh, I'm not going to do it in the, this case just because I don't really want to overwrite my my main control scheme with just a, a default one uh, but in, in order to get the the action layer to, to be removed uh, you would use this remove action layer button right here and it's the same kind of thing you just choose which one you want to remove and you can stack them on on top of each other um, I haven't played around entirely with wh which order they get applied in but I would assume that the buttons are going to that the layers are going to go in the order of the the layer that they use but anyway i've got a couple of of action layers here i have a simple one right here the the gyro aim and i have one called run here that's uh, slightly more complicated and uh, we'll get into the reason why i have those two different ones 
uh, when we're demonstrating. So let's go ahead and launch Shadow of Mordor so that we can uh, show off the the configuration that I have here. So here we are actually in game and first of all let, let's go back and show you exactly what the gyro aim does. Uh, on the default action set I have it set to activate gyro aim when pushing the left trigger and it does that on a start press with a soft pull. So once you do that what it should do is enable the gyro and then do a left trigger until until the trigger is released then it will remove that action set. And what that does if you can see the configuration here it makes it so that I can use the gyro for bow aiming and I could also go in and change the, the buttons for example I may want to use the I may want to use the the trackpad in order to push the A button, or I may want something else to be able to fire the bows as well. And you can see, I, if I move the controller without the without the thing pressed, it's not doing anything. But once I once I push down the button, it actually does keep the thing activated. A real successful hunt. So let's take a look at the Let other be one because there are a few the known one. bugs that that I've been able to find while using the action sets or the action layers rather. So you can see that right now I have it set so that when I click in the left trackpad that it's going to change to this run action set. And that run action set is going to keep the A button held down until I let go of the trackpad. And then it moves back to just walking. So it becomes sort of a, a quick toggle run, run kind grouse. of thing. Who knew you could do that? I'll believe it when I see it. Now, uh, so I'm going too. to ignore those there orcs no now. I got a little bit distracted there. But let's show you what happens when I go to from the run action set to a completely identical run action layer. So in order to do that I need to change this so that instead of going to the action set it's going to apply the run action layer. And once again let me show you they are completely identical. So on the left trackpad the outer ring is going to hold the A button. I've set the outer ring so that it's completely down so that anywhere on the trackpad is going to activate that. And then when you release it, it's supposed to remove that action layer. But let's see what it actually does. You can see that I've already clicked it in and it's not actually running. Now, at first glance, it may look like it's not actually applying that, that action layer. But if we go into the gyro aim... Just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to remove this second one, uh, just so you can see it here. Oh, it looks like... it looks like the... the run action set actually didn't get the... I placed it on the wrong one, so that's... that's the reason why it wasn't coming up there. So let's get the run back so that it does X and that's going to, we're going to add this back to the remove press right here and there we are. So again, it should be holding down the A button but instead it's turning the A button into X, and when I let go, it does that. So it's clearly, it's clearly accessing the settings that that I set up, but it's actually not uh, applying 
more than one activator at a time, just the last one. So the one in this case that removes the action layer when I let go of it. And you can see if I'm not actually using the action layers, but going straight to the identical uh, run action set. Let's set that up here. Then in that case, everything works just fine again. So currently, if you want to use multiple activators in your in your action set change, you need to make sure that you actually do use an action set rather than an action layer until that bug gets fixed. Uh, the the only other thing that I really noticed let let's see if we can if we can actually do this in the the gyro aim thing right here. Uh, we're going to invert the vertical axis on the on the trackpad here, and we'll try and s set it to also be on over here. Uh, you can see that it flips it back to off. And another thing is that um, if we move it on here at this point, you can see it doesn't have the inverted, even though we have it on the original one. So inversion does not actually work with the the action layers either. But th those are the only two bugs that, that I was able to find. Uh, if you can s set up the inversion in-game, that's a good way to work around that particular issue. But, yeah. That's what I've been seeing so far, just that not all of the activators get activated, just the most recent one. And not all of the settings carry over, and more specifically, I've noticed that it's the invert vertical axis that's that's not being saved in the most recent update. It looks like it doesn't necessarily even matter whether it's in the action layer or in the action set. But yeah, those are my only two complaints. They're kind of small complaints, but they're enough that right now I wouldn't actually recommend... What was that? Yeah, I, I wouldn't actually recommend um, running out and downloading this beta right away because there are some things that are significantly broken and so I really wouldn't worry about rushing out to, to get this. But anyway, it is an exciting new feature, and once it does work, uh, on my website, the steamcontrollerfanclub.com, or, or rather just steamcontrollerfanclub.com, I made a list of features that Valve could still add to the Steam Controller to make it better, and this was actually on there. So I am super stoked that I was able to get that done. But anyway, that's it from me. This is Leo Damascus, and I'm signing off for now. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.